you should be looking at things like technographic, firmographic, demographic, and talking to those people, interviewing them, understanding what their challenges are, and then going and seeking those people out and building campaigns for those people. Hey everyone, um, my name is Megan Boone, the director of demand gen at ThoughtSpot. And I'm here today to talk to you about activating your intent data. Um, super excited about this session. Uh, I've heard a lot of folks are really struggling with this and really excited to hear what we're doing. Um, we're just scratching the surface on this. And so really looking forward to hearing what, you know, everyone who's listening to this is, is doing and trying and thinking about. Um, so please put your questions in the chat and we'll answer them as quickly as possible. So to start a little bit about me, who, who's here talking, why, why am I an intent expert? Um, I'll be the first to say I'm not, um, but I do a lot of experimentation and we're, we're doing a lot with intent today. So my background, uh, I'm an Oregon duck, go ducks. Hopefully there, there's a couple in the audience, um, but I've, I've always been a demand gen marketer. Uh, I started my career at Cisco, which was a great place to start. Um, large company, you know, everything is working, seeing, you know, how to operate at massive scale. But I quickly learned I'm a startup person. I want to get into startups. So, so I joined Clary um, early days and it was, it was a fabulous experience. I got to build from scratch. Got to try a little bit of everything. Um, super fun, great team, great product. Learned a ton about sales, which is really, really critical to be an effective marketer, especially a demand gen marketer. Um, and then I ended up joining Google. Um, I joined Google when the cloud team felt like a startup within Google, which is hard to imagine now, I think, with the scale they're operating at. Um, but it was really fun. We got to build out a lot of the B2B side of, of what Google does, which was pretty new. Um, you know, there's a really robust ads business, but um, selling cloud was, was a totally different beast. Um, so, you know, got to work with the SMB side, with the enterprise side, um, you know, helping small businesses, you know, get productive on G Suite all the way up to helping large enterprises thinking about how to operationalize AI. Uh, and then I ended up, you know, when it no longer felt like a startup, uh, joined even a small fintech uh, mission driven startup, um, working with really large employers, helping their employees um, uh, fight the paycheck to paycheck cycle that most of them are struggling in. And so um, that was a really great experience. Another fabulous team. Um, and I am now at ThoughtSpot leading demand gen. Um, if you're not familiar with ThoughtSpot, think of us as Google for your business data. Um, we're solving a really huge problem. I think most people here are probably struggling with, you know, how do I get more from my data? How do I get more insights out of it? How do I move faster, get reports faster? And so that's what we're really looking to solve. Um, you know, we put data in the hands of every business user. Um, it's It's been a massive challenge for folks. And so if this is something that you're currently struggling with, you know, take a look at ThoughtSpot, reach out. You know, we would, we would love to chat. We use it every single day. That's something I really care about when I work at companies is I want to use the product. Uh, and, you know, I, I do everything uh, in ThoughtSpot. It's really changed how, how we look at data, how we operate with marketers and how we build a business. So um, really, really good stuff we're building. Um, but enough about me. Let's jump in. What, what am I covering today? What are you going to be listening to? We've got about 20, 25 minutes um, of content and then there'll be some Q&A. Um, what I am covering, strategy, how to think about uh, how intent fits into your marketing strategy um, and your overall demand gen strategy. I'm going to be going into some real examples. Uh, I'll pop up in the hood. I'm going to show you what I'm actually doing. I'm not going to get super, super in the weeds because I can't, you know, I can't give away all the magic, but I will talk about, you know, types of intent data we're using, what types of campaigns we're applying, um, how we're getting that data and making it um, real time and dynamic. Um, no more of those static list uploads. I will do anything to avoid that. Um, and so uh, you'll see how we're doing that. Um, I'm not here to talk about vendors. You know, we, we use a couple different sources for intent data right now. I'll share where we're getting those, um, but this really isn't a session about, you know, which vendors should you be thinking about, which intent data is better or worse. Um, that's really not the topic. Um, and then it's also not a one-on-one -on -one course. Um, you know, I'll be talking about strategy and how it fits in, but I'm not going to be talking about, you know, what is intent data? What are all the vendors doing, the different types of vendors? Um, and so if that's what you're looking for, you know, I think you'll still find this valuable, but you might want to uh, read up or go find another session there first and then, and then come back to this content. So I'm hoping that if you're here, you're either struggling with intent data or just scratching the surface. Um, you know, the reason I'm doing this session is because 
it does feel so elusive for most people. And so, you know, most people I talk to feel like, you know, this, this meme on the left, you're, you're trying to activate your intent data. I think this is the confused lady. I think this is what it's called. Um, we're overcomplicating things. And, and we do like to do that as marketers. Um, we're we're kind of notorious for it. We want everything to be perfect before it gets out the door. Um, but that's what's holding you back. And so I'm hoping after this session, uh, you feel empowered and you feel so excited that you can't stop yelling. And if you don't feel like this after this session, let's talk. Because I want to make sure you feel like this, especially with intent data. You know, I'd, I'd love to talk about anything you are currently struggling with and, and we can figure out, you know, like what to do next. Okay, so into the content we go, common challenges. This is kind of the, the place I wanna start. This is a survey done by Topo. Um, they have this great intent data market guide. Um, it really breaks it down into, we're all kind of struggling. Everyone's talking about intent data and no one's really doing it. Um, if I'm gonna distill this um, into two categories to kind of simplify it for everyone is, you know, everyone's struggling with doing something with intent data and then measuring if that doing something is even working. And so again, with the over complications, we just have to start doing and start learning for us to really build uh, a long-term strategy here. But it's it's not simple. This is hard for a reason. B2B is complicated. You know, I love this image. I've used this before. It's been circulating on LinkedIn recently. It's from a couple of years ago, but it really does illustrate, you know, why B2B is complicated. There's there's no linear journey here. Um, and there's no, there's no one right way to do things. And so, you know, a lot of the times if you're talking to other companies, everyone wants the secret playbook. They want to know, you know, if you're interviewing, what, what are you going to do here? What's like, what's going to make you hit the ground running? But there's no, there's no simple answer. Like there's, there's fundamentals you can bring, there's tools you can bring, but every project is different. Um, but there are steps we can take. Um, we can make this simpler. We don't have to say, okay, this is really complicated. It takes people many months to buy. They have to do all sorts of research. So let's just throw up our hands and not try. That's not what we're going to do. We've never done this. This is basics for, for marketing. Um, there's a lot of psychology behind why people buy and how people buy. And so this is how we look at the funnel. Um, you should have some semblance of funnel strategy to guide what you're doing. But when you're actually executing, it's it's not linear. So this is just, do I have all the right pieces of content, the right experiences in place to cater the folks before I even go out and start executing? Um, we think about it in three stages, problem aware, solution aware, product aware. I'm going to talk about these in the examples. Um, problem aware, uh, prospects understand that they have a problem but they don't know there's a solution. Um, so this is a lot of top of funnel education that you're doing. And, and let me actually take a step back. There are a lot of people who are not gonna fit into this. Do not waste your time trying to bring people into the problem aware stage. There will be plenty of people if there's some semblance of product market fit for all three of these stages. And our job in demand gen is to start at the problem aware stage and bring people down the funnel. As more people buy and you get happy customers, Momentum will start to build and more people will come into this problem aware category. So I would recommend starting at problem aware. Don't waste your time on the people before. There should be plenty here. Uh, solution aware. Uh, prospects know that they want to tackle a problem. They know that there are solutions to it, but they're not really sure uh, which product they want to go with. Um, so this is, you know, classic middle of funnel content. Um, and there's some recommendations below on how to approach each of these stages. Again, it's going to be a little different depending on, you know, which industry you're in and what the market looks like. Are you building a category? Are you in an existing category? Things like that. Um, so it's important to make sure you take your own flavor of this. Uh, and then there's product where this is very obvious. They, they know who you are. They know your name. They've probably been talking to you or been engaging with you of some sort. Um, but they haven't made a decision. Uh, they haven't made a decision yet. So um, the reason we tackle the funnel this way so it really puts us in the minds of our prospects. Um, it's not about us. It's about them. And it's really, really hard to pull yourself out of that, especially when you've been at a company for a long time. You know, you think about your company probably 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, your prospects don't. They think about themselves. They think about their company and the problems that they're solving. And so when you frame it like this, it helps you put uh, yourself in their shoes and then you should have questions like, what are people asking along the way? What are the problems they're dealing with at each of these stages? And how can you help them? And it's not applying your specific solution at each of these stages. It's shepherding them to the next stage. The goal isn't at problem aware to get them to buy immediately. It's to get them to solution aware. So remember that the goal of every campaign can't just be to 
make a purchase, sign up for a free trial, uh, you know, create a first meeting, engage with an opportunity. Like it, it really has to be focused on them and how to get them to the next step. It can't be jumping ahead. Um, you know, we internally talk about this a lot, you know, with our free trial, where sometimes if you approach it too early, it's like asking someone to marry you on the first date. Same thing can be applied for, for any type of funnel, any type of marketing. Um, don't ask people to marry you on the first date. I mean, it maybe it works for some people, but most people, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so, so where do we start, you know, to, to pull it back into intent? Um, and, and don't worry, I have, I have a point to be made here, but this is how I think about demand gen. Um, I like to simplify the frameworks. Otherwise, it feels overly complex. If we look back to that Gartner slide, you know, B2B buying can be kind of a headache. And so it's important to not like get bogged down with those details and to really focus on um, the core strategy that you can control. So the four key areas, ideal customer profile. This is not synonymous with personas. Some people think that they're interchangeable terms. They aren't. They live together and they both have purpose in your marketing strategy. So it's really important that you have both. But ideal customer profile takes personas a step farther. It's not what type of people are you talking to? What type of people use your product? What type of people are you selling to? And you know, what are they passionate about? What are the problems they solve at work? It's actually taking it to the account level too and saying, who are my best customers? Who is moving through the sales pipeline the fastest? Who has really high NPS scores? Who has probably a large uh, deal size? Uh, and if we were going to break that into a quadrant, we're going to look at the upper right. Uh, that's where we want to be. And we want to clone those customers. We don't want to spend time who take a really long time to work with our sales team. And we don't want to spend a lot of time with people who are going to churn. They're going to be detractors and it actually is going to have a negative long-term impact. We'd rather have a smaller number of um uh, uh, promoters and hopefully start to clone those and then momentum will build. They'll go out and they'll, they'll advocate for your business. And so that's really what the ideal customer profile is. And it should be a small number of people and it should be evolving constantly. You should be evaluating this every quarter, every year. Um, it should always be evolving as your product evolves. The type of customers you first start with aren't going to be the type of customers who are super successful now. Um, there's going to be some changes. So you should be looking at things like technographic, firmographic, demographic, and talking to those people, interviewing them, understanding what their challenges are, and then going and seeking those people out and building campaigns for those people. Ability to target. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Um, I'm already, I think, <laughs> a little bit slow on timing, but you need to meet buyers where they are. You can't do this if you don't know your ideal customer profile. Um, there's strategic ad placement. There's organic. You know, Do you have a podcast strategy? How are you building audiences? This is, again, full funnel, and there's different uh, tactics at each stage of the funnel. Uh, and the next two are really your core differentiators, creative execution and handoff. Everyone has access to the same tools. Everyone has access to the same best practices. So the only differentiator you have in your back pocket is how can you be more creative and how can you be a much smoother buying process? Because there are so many people out there. How can you make it super easy for people to work with you? Um, so you will notice that intent data is in its own column here. Um, this is on purpose. Intent data isn't a strategy. It's a tactic. It fits into the larger strategy that you have. And this is why it feels overcomplicated. You know, we want to start at the place where we have this master intent orchestration strategy and data model where we have a single view of the customer. This is great. And this is what we should be working towards. But most of us aren't there yet. We're not there yet. We would love to be there, but we're, we're not quite there yet. So what I don't want to do is hold up uh, actually using intent until I get to that point, because it's going to take us a really long time to get there. Um, I can use intent today and it will make me better than I was yesterday without it because it's another, it's in just another piece of the puzzle here that I'm activating. So before I really jump into the details, I'll leave you with this. This is, you know, the marketing technology landscape. This is from 2020. This isn't even 2021. If you look at the bottom right, it grows every single year. Um, we get really excited about the new shiny things. I do. Most people do. I love looking at new tech. It's so much fun to see what, you know, cutting edge uh, tech is out there, but it's not the end point. It's the starting point. And it's really important to remember that, you know, tech shouldn't be guiding your strategy. You should have a strategy and then go find the tech to enable it. And when you bring that tech in, let's talk in this terms, intent data, you're going and buying that intent data that earns you the right to get to the starting line. It's not great. I've got my intent data, wash my hands. Hopefully the sales team does something with it. Hopefully people do something with it. It's no, okay, now I have this uh, tool at my disposal. How am I going to go use it? Um, so what, what is the starting line? It's the creative brief. Um, it's, as, it's as simple as that. There's not 
some fancy science. There's no shortcut here. It's, it's really the creative brief. Um, this is the most important part of what we're doing. Um, this is how we approach the creative brief. Um, again, there's no right, or maybe there's a wrong way, but there's no um, exact formula for how to do it. You need to find what works best for your business, but it does need to be some semblance of, you know, why am I prioritizing this? Who is this for? What am I going to say? What do I want them to do? How do I want them to act? And how can I back this up? That's that's the creative brief. And you should spend a lot of time here. Um, I always like to think about Mark Twain. Well, I think it's Mark Twain, but you know, there's a lot of uh, miscredited quotes. My understanding is Mark Twain um, has this famous quote, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Spend the time, write a shorter brief. Don't copy and paste these long paragraphs. People's eyes are going to glaze over. Your creatives aren't going to know what to do with it. You're not going to know how to be strategic with it. This is the secret to amazing creative. And this is the difference between lukewarm and red hot. If you want to have creative that people react to, you have to put in the time to build the brief. This is the core strategy. And this should guide people to take it a step farther. If you come in to create a campaign, you know exactly what you want to do. No one else has contributed. You haven't spent time on the strategy. You actually probably haven't found the right solution yet. So it is really important. Spend the time here, make it short, make it clear, be thoughtful, um, and work with your other marketing counterparts or whoever else you're working with on campaigns to make sure you know exactly what you're doing. If you receive a creative brief and you don't feel like it's up to par, you're confused, push back on the people you're working with. Say, I don't quite understand this. If you don't understand it, your prospects certainly won't understand it and it will go right over their head. Um, it won't be impactful here. So. Before I move on to our examples, um, and, and that's what I'm getting into next, that's kind of the meaty, exciting stuff. Um, this is what every marketer at Google lives by. And I think this really simplifies the concept of the creative brief. Know the user, know the magic, connect the two. It's as simple as that. You have to deeply understand who you're talking to. So that's where the personas and the ideal customer profile come in. You have to know the magic. You have to understand your product. You have to understand your market and know what like what is game changing for people? Again, this is why ideal customer profile is so important because there's not going to be magic for every type of buyer. Sometimes people will buy, it's not the right fit and they're going to churn. We don't want to spend time bringing those people in. It's a bad experience for, for both you, the brand, and then the prospects. Um, so again, know the user, know the magic, connect the two. That's your takeaway for the creative brief. Okay, the meaty stuff, we're in finally. Um, I've got five examples I'm going to walk through. Um, again, please ask any questions in chat. Um, I'm not giving away all the details, um, but hopefully this is detailed enough that you can take this away and do something with it. Um, but I am going to be looking at different types of intent data and how we leverage it to actually operationalize it. And now I will say, we don't only use intent data. We use other types of data minus intent because we know there are specific people we're building these campaigns for. So intent is just a way that we can get this out in market and we can be more cost efficient and hopefully create a better experience for our prospects, but it's not our only strategy. So strategy here, we wanna highlight relevant analyst content to educate prospects on how we fit in the market. We're using in-market intent to do that, to go find those people, because again, if we're not using target accounts, we're probably just kind of spraying and praying and hoping we get in front of the right people, but there's no guarantee that we are. So we are using um, six cents account buying stage, consideration and decision. For this, it's both, you know, at the funnel stage, I put solution aware, that's our middle of funnel, product aware is our bottom of funnel. It is a fit for both um, people who are actively engaging with your product. They know, they know who you are. Um, are, are absolutely a fit for this, but there's also other ways you can get them in front of this content. Email, working with the sales team, your website chat, there's other channels. And so you might not want to spend as much money here on, on people who already know who you are. Um, I'm looking at account segment. This is important for analyst content for us. Um, Gartner is really big still in the enterprise space. We invest a lot in the magic quadrant. We're really proud of the position we receive year after year. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, jive as much with our smaller audiences or commercial segment. And so I don't really want to spend time on those people. Um, and then I also want to make sure that I'm getting this to more senior folks because analyst content isn't a great fit for everyone at a company, everyone who might be using your product. And so those are 
Um, the targeting I'm going to apply here. I'm very focused on conversion and lead gen. It's important to identify this and it cannot be your ad objective for everything you're doing. Just it, it's a big one, but it can't be for everything. Uh, and then how am I getting this data? Again, I, I can't upload lists. I will forget they exist. I don't have the time. I run a very lean team. Um, we need our, our list to be as dynamic as possible. And if it's static, we're probably going to skip doing that. Um, so our data sources here, we're getting the intent data from Sixth Sense. We have an integration with Salesforce. Um, if there's an account in Sixth Sense that isn't in Salesforce, we do have an automation rule. If they do fit our ICP criteria, it will create an account in Salesforce. And so we use that Salesforce data then. Um, we're, we use metadata, so we're actually executing um, our, our paid social strategy through metadata. And so that's actually how we're building these audiences. Um, for all my examples, I will say I do use um, paid social as the primary example. It's a really, really huge channel for us. We have a very engaged audience here, but there's a lot of other channels you should be using and you can be using intent data for. So it's really just um, to serve as an example. So the next example, um, someone visits your review page on a social proof site, trust rate is G2, there's a lot of them. Um, what do I do with that? That's really important. You should be sharing this with sales, absolutely. But you should also be marketing to them too. We wanna work together with sales on the same accounts. This is again, ICP, we wanna identify who we're going after and work as a team to bring them in and engage them. Um, so. I want to leverage social proof to capture existing attention and hopefully convert people to some of our bottom of funnel offers. If they come to our, our review page, we can assume safely that they are product aware. They've been on our page. They're looking at what people are saying about us, uh, what our features and functionalities are. Um, you can also use this for awareness, uh, clicks, impressions if you want. Um, we're using this for conversion and lead gen. Um, I'm looking at trust radius page views from the last 30 days. I'm looking at job function because I don't want just everyone who visits our page. You could be, you know, looking for a job here. You could be um, someone who's not really involved but has heard about us. Um, so it's important that we're looking at job function. Um, we don't want to waste our time and energy trying to bring people in who aren't a right fit. And then we're looking at number of employees here. So we do want to set a threshold on who we're trying to engage with. We don't want to just bring in any type of company just because they might be interested in us. We want to bring in the types of companies that are most likely going to buy and buy efficiently from us. So the way we're getting this data is we have Trust Radius integrated with Sixth Sense, Sixth Sense, which is integrated with Salesforce from your real-time intent data. This is fantastic. I'm not doing static list uploads here. It's a game changer. Um, and we're running this on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, it's also worth noting, we are always um, experimenting with creative, the messaging, the look and feel of the content, what the content is. And so you should always be rotating and learning um, what that is and what's resonating with your audience. Um, something I've also noticed is, you know, people start to pick up on what other companies are doing and it saturates how the creative is impactful. So you kind of have to stay one step ahead too. Um, if something works for you and everyone starts doing it, you got to try something new. Uh, example three, uh, category research. Um, they're looking at the category. They might not have looked at your page specifically, but you know that they are spending time doing research. Um, don't lose this opportunity. This is super important to grab their attention. And so for me, what we look at is, uh, well, I'm going to say it again, attention grabbing top of funnel content. Um, it should be somewhat controversial. If your content, especially at the top of funnel, isn't saying something that is turning people away, you're probably not saying something meaningful to your ICP. So for us, dashboards are dead. This is one of our top performing campaigns of all time. Um, it's because we are challenging the status quo. Um, we put a lot of uh, effort into this one. There are a lot of research, a lot of strategy went into this. You know, you have to do it depending on, uh, you know, what, what your current challenges are, what your customers are facing. But for us, this, this message really resonates and it's a really meaty guide. It's not just, you know, clickbait here. Um, go to our website, take a look at it. It's uh, one of my favorite uh, assets that we have. Um, but this is the problem aware stage, um, conversion lead gen. And here we're looking at G2 category intent, 90 day look back. And so that's pretty broad. And so I want to tighten it up a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to look at title and seniority. This type of content, most people are interested in. So if I'm paying for it, I want to tighten up the targeting a little bit so I make sure that it's actually converting. Um, I'm looking at number of employees. I'm looking at industry here too. You know, we we have the luxury to sell to uh, any type of company, 
Um, but that doesn't mean we want any type of company to come in at any time. And so we want to be really thoughtful there. Um, and then that G2 integration is directly through metadata. Uh, and we're on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I know I am almost out of time. So I'm going to go through the rest of these very, very quickly. Um, example four, in-market awareness. I'm looking at Sixth Sense buying stage. Um, they're at awareness. Uh, I just want them to get to know our brand. So I'm actually going to look for video views. We've, a, we've invested a lot in great video content and I want to get it out there. It's received really well. And so I just want people to uh, consume it and start to get to know us without any kind of ask. We're, we're not asking them to fill out a form. We're not asking them to sign up for a demo or a trial. We're saying, hey, this is who we are. Hopefully this message resonates. Uh, and then my last example, this isn't going to be relevant to everyone, but is category adjacent intent. And so for us, if you're out in the market buying a cloud data warehouse, it actually signals it's a really, really good time to buy ThoughtSpot as well. You're usually looking to solve a big, meaty problem with data, and you want to get data in the hands of your business users. And so um, we see this a lot with Snowflake, for example. They're a close partner of ours. Um, if you buy Snowflake, a lot of the times you're going to buy ThoughtSpot at the exact same time. And there's a couple of core use cases. You know, we we know what they are, and so. Um, we're really targeted here. This might feel like a little bit more of a bottom of funnel um, offer. However, at the problem aware stage with our technical audience, um, we want to go pretty hard with this and say, hey, we know you're looking to solve a problem. We, we've already sensed that through the intent. Um, so let's just jump to the chase. Here's how you can do it by combining all those data sources you're already looking to combine. Uh, and again, this is trust radius integrated into Sixth Sense, which is integrated into Salesforce. Um, so I'm going to leave you with one last thought um, from Walt Disney. Creative genius, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Just start experimenting. Um, it's it's not as intimidating as many people make it out to be. It's a part of your strategy. You know the content you're building. You know the marketing strategy. Use intent data to help you get to those people faster. Our goal as marketers is to get the right message in front of the right people at the right time through the right experience. Intent is just one of those ways uh, to get there. So, Thank you for having me. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share how we're using intent data with all of you. Um, again, questions, put them in chat. Um, hopefully I'll get to answer them um, and, and let's connect. I'm on LinkedIn. Reach out to me. I'd love to chat. Um, thank you.